Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, of course, my name is Jeffrey Wilson, and I would like to share with you all the analysis and action plan for teacher empowerment and leadership in Wellington Middle School. All right, I have with me my PLC group, Mr. Danny Foray, Mr. Chase Williams, and Ms. Julie Adams. And we are presenting to my assistant principal, Ms. Wendy Pyro. All right, so. All right, with that, let's talk about some best practices, okay? First thing I'd like to discuss is building efficacy and empowerment among staff. When it comes to school administrators, they empower their teachers by providing vivid objectives regarding the staff's requirements, such as resources and training to achieve their goals without leaving, resuming control and overstepping the mark. Okay, so that means we, as school administrators, we have to uh, learn not to micromanage, but give tasks and expect those tasks to, to be carried out by staff. The school leadership can also develop an all around teacher enhancing their self efficacy, which relates to an individual's belief in their ability and capability to perform particular tasks successfully. All right. Results-oriented professional, professional development. Results-oriented professional development of the educators can be achieved by undertaking a series of steps to ensure that the teaching process is effective and efficient and lives to the desired goal and objective set. The active learning PD strategy entails moving away from traditional models of learning that are lecture-based and generic and moving towards those that directly engage educators in the learning practices. All right, recruitment, replacement, and mentoring of school staff. Given that America is a multicultural society, the school system has the best opportunities for promoting cohesiveness, respect for one another, and diversity through hiring, mentoring and placement strategies for the school staff. Okay, school administrators and districts must rely on data to forecast. The staffing needs and establish the people underrepresented in the workforce. Okay, basically what that means is that um, Research shows that students do better in school and academic environments when they see people that are rep that represent them in staff and leadership positions. Okay. Approaches for evaluation of school staff. As a school leader, I must continuously evaluate the school staff's performance to ensure that they are living to the expectation set of enhancing the student's learning outcomes. How do we do that? Well, we do it through classroom observation, okay? They entail analyzing the educators' teaching strategies and behaviors, and that is the most common tool to be utilized. All right, teacher leadership and decision-making. The most successful organizations in today's dynamic world involve multiple stakeholders, including workers, customers, suppliers, and their operations key processes and decisions. The same is also true for the teaching profession. And the educators always want to be a part of the process in all speeds, not just only the grading and teaching of students. Okay. Research shows that the school is basically uh, like customer uh, customer focus. It's like customer service. Okay. When it comes to customer service, students and the parents are the customers. Okay. And we need to meet those needs and make sure that they are satisfied. According to Tom Whitaker, effective school principals and districts identify key teacher leaders and involve them in decision making. School leaders rely on educators who will help the school progress and enhance students' academic achievement and who have the potential and capability to improve the curriculum and programs of the whole learning atmosphere. All right. Let's look at the gap analysis that the PLC group completed. All right, 
Here is the instructional walkthrough form that was created. Okay. Um, there are a series of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven questions that were asked. Um, uh, as far as learning, learning examples, student engagement, um, behavior, digital tools, classroom culture. And these were adapted through the, um, the form that the district and Whittington both used for instructional walkthroughs. And when it comes to instructional walkthroughs, I completed walkthroughs with our principal, Mr. Philippe, and our assistant principal, Ms. Pyramon. All right, once we did the walkthrough, I did the walkthrough analysis, and based on uh, the information here, most of the things that were looked for were actually observed, okay? There were only a couple areas where we found things that were not observed, such as instructional balance. One out of, uh, one out of five teachers did not of, uh, did not have that instructional balance piece. And two out of five walkthroughs did not have the digital tools piece. But everything else was dead on. There was instructional alignment, classroom culture was there, student outcomes were there, learning targets, and student engagement. So that is a very good thing when it comes, when it comes to the walkthrough analysis here with you. All right. Then moved on and created a teacher leadership survey. Okay, again, these questions were pulled from the um, North Carolina Working Conditions Teacher Working Conditions Survey. All right, I pulled a series of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven questions as well. Okay, from that survey. All right, so the survey was sent out via email to. 40 teachers here at Wood. Okay. Um, I only received responses from 25 out of 40. Okay, which is a about 55, 60%. Okay, of teachers responded to the survey. All right. When it comes to professional standards, teachers are held to high professional standards for delivering instruction. Okay. We have about 52% that strongly agree with that. Okay. Uh, we have about 40% that agree. And only a couple teachers uh, disagreed with that statement. Here, we talked about decision making in the school. Teachers have an appropriate level of influence on decision making in the school. Here, we have about 70, right at 80 percent, excuse me, 80 percent who, no, excuse me, we have 52 percent who agree. We had 28 percent who were neutral, and we had a smaller percentage of those who. Um, disagree. Okay. Next slide. Continue. Group problem solving. Okay. Faculty has an effective process for making group decisions to solve problems. All right. The majority, right at uh, 90, I believe, 5%, were in agreement with that. They either agree or they strongly agree with that. Professional decision making about instruction. Teachers are trusted to make sound professional decisions about instruction. Okay, we had uh, 72 plus 16, which is right at 88% of teachers who agree or strongly agree with that statement as well. All right, school leadership participation. Teachers are encouraged to participate in school leadership roles. Okay, we had pretty much everyone agreed with that or strongly agreed. There was no disagreement there, but consider also there were only 25 responses out of the 40, okay? Teachers as educational experts, okay? Teachers are recognized as educational experts. Now here we have about 80% who agree, but then we had 20% who disagree or strongly disagree with that statement. Um, with teachers being recognized as educational experts in our field. All right, the last question, teacher feedback for improvement, okay? Teachers receive feed feedback that can help them improve teaching, okay? We had about 92% who agreed or strongly agreed, and the other 8% disagreed or strongly disagreed, okay? When it comes to feedback. 
Because there were only responses from 25 out of the 40 teachers, okay, I felt the, felt the need to go and do a little more data analysis. So I went and pulled up um, Woodington's results from the 2020 North Carolina Teacher Working Condition Survey. And when I pulled those results, we found that there are a particular, there are a few categories that really needs, need some attention as a PLC, okay? The first one, providing input on how the school budget will be spent. You have 27% plus 49%, which is a uh, 76%. 76% of the teachers here um, disagree with that statement, okay? So there's 76% of the teachers here at Whittington who disagree and uh, feel that they do not have an opportunity to provide input on how the school budget um, is spent, okay? And we thought that there was a major area of concern because it was well over 50 percent. Here, I received no additional support as a new teacher. This was pulled from the new teacher section. Okay, if you notice, for this school, a hundred percent of the teachers feel that they receive no additional support as a new teacher. And I think that they that is a major area of concern and the PLC group did as well. Compared to the district, 78% uh, of teachers in the district feel that same way. But 100%, uh, I think that's something that needs some attention, okay? Here, the selection of teachers new to the school. In other words, um, they were, there were, 89% of the teachers here, 89% um, are in disagreement with this statement. 89% of the teachers here feel that they are not invited to give any input when it comes to new hires, hirees at the school, okay? Uh, compared to about 70% for the district. We're at 89% for women, okay? So 89% feel that they're left out of the process when it comes to hiring new teachers. Lastly, these sections are from the professional development um, section of the survey, okay? Um, we found that there were over seven, I think, categories where there were over 40% of teachers who felt like they needed more uh, assistance or professional development in these areas, such as content area, North Carolina standards, course of study, student assessment, uh, special education, uh, and uh, as, as far as students with disabilities and special education as far as the gifted and talented. Okay, those are a few examples. But you have over 40% in each one of those categories who feel that they need extra professional development in those areas. All right, so PLC, we sat down, we sat down and we created a growth plan. And we'd like to share some of that information. All right, so based on those four things that weigh heavily to us, okay, we went and there are four activities that we selected based on the needs that we saw uh, through the gap analysis. All right, the first activity says that teachers will meet quarterly to discuss available funds and how they will be allocated, all right? The timeline for this is May of 2022. Persons responsible would be administration, and we decided that department chairs would be more beneficial because I don't think 40 people in a room uh, <laughs> Well, it's going to be productive when it comes to making decisions concerning the budget. But involving the department chairs would give an equal representation of the school. Okay? Resources needed. We would need budget data. We would need current required expenses. And we would need to know the available fund amounts. Okay? The formative assessment method would be anonymous surveys for teachers to share what their thoughts about uh, to share their thoughts about what and where to spend the money. The summative assessment piece would be a copy of the budget shared and 
who would ask teachers to share their thoughts on its successes at the end of the school year. The goal, the short term goal is to uh, increase the agreement, which is uh, equal to a 25% decrease on the working survey for the next year. That would be a short term goal. And a long term goal, realistically speaking, would be a 50% decrease uh, based on the responses on the survey. Okay. Indicator of success the amount of resources available are more fitting to the needs of the classroom. That's how we know that this plan would have taken effect. Okay. Scroll down to the second plan, second intervention. Teachers will create interview questions for new hirees. Okay. The questions are then would then be submitted by December of 2021. Okay. Involved here, you would have classroom teachers and administration. Okay. And the questions that uh, administration used during the process would be the resources that are needed, okay? As well as grade level meeting time to establish specific questions amongst grade levels. Okay, the final approval of interview questions sent to administration. That would be the formative assessment, okay? And the summative assessment would be the completion of a survey to document the teacher's responses. Short term goal would be teachers feel valued in the process of hiring new teachers. Okay. And the long term goal is that the interview team would feel more valued in the selection of new teachers. And lastly, the selected question and teach the selected question asked. And teachers will be a the selected question, and teachers will be a part of the interview hiring process. That's how we know that it would be probably properly implemented. Okay. All right. Third, teachers will meet monthly with experienced teachers to collaborate with strategies for classroom management and content development. Okay. This addresses the um, new teacher concern where they were 100 feel that they don't have the additional support that they need okay the timeline for this will be may of 2022 and persons responsible will be the classroom uh yeah persons responsible will be the classroom teachers uh yes and the persons the resources needed would be experienced teachers with five years plus experience on the job. And the PLC came up with that, with that number. Okay. Every two months, teachers will complete a questionnaire about what they're observing and how it has helped them in the classroom environment. Okay. There would be a uh, formative assessment. No, excuse me, a summative assessment. The summative assessment would be progress checks at the end of the year, okay, up to three per year. The short term goal would be to reduce the disagreement by 75%, excuse me, by 25%. And the long term goal, that's a typo, should be 25%. And the long term goal would be to reduce the disagreement by 50% based on the results of the next year's working condition survey. And the indicator of success here is that the number of teachers who remain after completing three years of the VT program should increase by 10% on a yearly basis. We gather that that would be an effective indicator of success. All right, our last one, our last one. professional development, okay, interest should be assessed by teachers. Okay, and the timeline for this activity would be December of 2021. Administrators, yeah, administration and teachers would be um, responsible. What we would need is to collect survey data on proposed professional development efforts. Again, we found that there were seven categories that uh, had at least 40% uh, concern. 
All right. The formative assessment would be professional developments are completed by school staff. The summative assessment would be that school survey is completed at 100%. Okay. The short term goal would be that teachers are actively engaged in rigorous student based professional development. And the long term goal would be that teachers implement implementing learn strategies to engage students. And lastly, the indicator of success for this activity would be school wide collection of data for teachers on taking more professional development. Okay, ultimately you should teachers should be able to engage in the professional development that interests them because that's what's going to um, essentially stick and make them better teachers and better leaders okay and this concludes our presentation thank you dr wilson